Grace, Keto for Real Life People, and today is Tuesday, and we like to get in the kitchen and make something. Now, this is a little different because two things are happening here. First of all, I've got two phones up, and they're side by side, so I'm hoping that I'm not looking weird, but I'm looking at Instagram, and I'm looking at um, Facebook at the same time. So I figured I could try to do two at a time, and I always you know, wonder about Instagram because it's a little different. Now, I can't really get to the comments really quick because I can't see them from this distance. So, I'm just going to tell you what we're going to do today. Um, <clears throat> last night, you might have seen my pinwheels and oh my gosh, my family loved them. Now, the other thing that's happening is I'm carnivore. I've had a few little things here and there, but I have pretty much just stayed with meat and I did taste the pinwheels last night. I just I took a bite and, you know, ate some of that, and it was really good. And it got such a good response, and I had some requests, so we're going to go ahead and just make them up. And the wonderful thing about something like this, guys, is that it's so delicious. It's fun, you know. It's like things that we missed when we were, we are keto that we aren't anymore, and we just want to, uh, you know, have snacks and appetizers. Guys, this is, makes a wonderful meal. It makes a great wrap. It makes a great appetizer. This is something that you can make up and take to a party with you, and you will not feel deprived, okay? Now, the basis of this uh, dough is my four-ingredient miracle dough. I came up with this recipe back in May, and it is so versatile. So I thought, why not just go ahead and play with this and see what we get? Um, one thing that I did notice that after it cools down a little bit, it's a little chewier. So if you're getting them right fresh, they're great. You can heat these up. You can slice them. You can make them any way, which way you want. You can make them any flavor you want. It's just the, the, the possibilities are really just out there. As many as you can think of, you can do, right? So let's get started, guys. I'm going to start by making up a quick batch of um, Miracle Dough. It's only four ingredients. It, it cooks really quick. It, it, you can bake it, you can fry this dough, you can air fry it. Uh, every which way I've tried it is great. Um, it takes just a few minutes. Now I will have to step off for a minute to get to my microwave because I gotta nuke this for a few seconds. But other than that, I should be able to be good for go. So for the miracle dough, let's talk ingredients. I have Great value shredded mozzarella cheese. Some people say, hey, well, what about, uh, what about, is there starch in there or something to coat it to keep it from uh, sticking? I've never had a problem with it, y'all. You know, it did not hinder my weight loss, and I still don't think it does. So, oops, that was only a half a cup. I had the wrong measuring cup right there. Let's see. Oh, well, I'll just do it four times because I need two cups of mozzarella cheese and mine's actually been sitting on the counter for a little bit since I got back from the grocery store so it's a little soft right now which means it'll it'll melt really quickly there we go two cups of mozzarella cheese and we'll set that out of the way and then we add a tablespoon of psyllium husk you can use whole or you can use powder either way it doesn't make a difference and I am only using one tablespoon and I just sprinkle it over the cheese. It really adds texture, guys. Lupin flour is next, and it's a half a cup. The thing with lupin flour is, um, I have not been able to use it like cup for cup. It's very high protein, it's very high fiber. We're using a half a cup of this. Um, it is very low on the gly glycemic index. It doesn't spike your blood sugar and um, it does not cause inflammation. My, my one disclaimer is that, especially for those of you who are just tuning in into Instagram and might not know, that lupin flour uh, comes from the, the soy and peanut family. So there's a possibility that you, you could have a peanut reaction like you would an allergy reaction. So that's my disclaimer on there. Um, <clears throat> last but not least is two tablespoons of cream cheese. This just really smooths this out. Uh, lupin flour can have sometimes a, a little bit of a bitterness. And I think it's more in the raw state, guys, because 
Uh, it cooks out and there it is it is just wonderful. I use this dough to make pizza, enchiladas, lasagna, uh, pot stickers, egg rolls, tortillas, wraps. I mean you name it, this I make it. I'm getting my thumb all up in this cheese because you know hey, it's a little soft already and uh, yeah, I always have to make this. That's what I have to do. So let's just get that in there. And I'm done measuring now, so I'm gonna get this off my counter and out of the way. Sink and get the chills off my fingers. Ugh. Oh gosh, I just finished salmon, y'all. Oh, it was so good. I I got as close to a pound as I could at the store, and I just craved it. And oh, I'm so full. So I'm happy. I'm not gonna be tempted by my own pin rolls today. Elizabeth and the Maikito family will absolutely be loving this. So what you want to do here is just give it a little stir. And I'm just going to do it this. You can just stir this around. And you're going to pop it in the microwave, depending on your microwave strength, for about a minute to a minute and a half. And let it melt together. And somebody said, hey, is this just a, a fat head pizza dough? Not really. Not even close to it. Um, not even close to it, I don't think. You're, we're talking about, you know, uh, almond flour, cream cheese, eggs. Um, what else goes in with that pizza? Almond flour, cream cheese, eggs, mozzarella cheese. So, you know, it, it's different. It's a softer uh, texture. It's delicious. I love fat head, pizza, fat head pizza. But what I like about this is it takes away that whole nutty, floury thing. This has a true bread texture and taste. It's smooth. You can roll this out. You're going to see. I'm going to, depending on how long you bake this dough, okay, depending on how long you bake it, is it's going to be crisper, crunchier, so you can make crackers. I've made crackers, chips. I even made keto Doritos. Who does that? It works with that dough, guys. So let me get some um, parchment paper. Oh, and score, guys. The Dollar Tree started selling parchment paper. I'm like, heck yeah, a dollar a roll. And I like it because it's not that extra long uh, parchment paper that you have to cut and measure to your pants. It fits my baking sheets just right. Let me grab this. So just take a spoon. You're gonna see how easy this dough is to work with, okay? Uh, let me move this off of here so that you can see what I'm doing. And I'm just gonna give it a stir. It might seem a little crumbly, don't worry about it. If you feel like you need to put it in the microwave for another minute or so, go ahead. You can do that, but you can just actually get in here and start doing this. And it's hot. It's not so hot that I can't work with it, but it's hot enough to melt this cheese down. All right, and I just kind of roll it around in here and I get all the little pieces. I could probably nuke this for about 20 more seconds, but I think I'm good. I wanna get this cream cheese kind of incorporated. So I'll do it on my workspace, set that there. And it's, it's so pliable. You know, when you're working with fat head pizza dough, um, you have to keep your hands wet. This has enough fat in it from the cheese to just slide right back off like regular dough. It's fun to work with. Even my grandkids can do it, you know? So I'm gonna roll this. It's a little marbly. You can add what you want. If you wanna add a little baking powder to this for a poofier like wrap or, or you're making a cinnamon roll, which I'm gonna be working on that. Ooh, I got a couple of ideas to do with this, you guys. So you can get your rolling pin out. And I happen to have a very heavy, I've got a, a standard, you know, wooden one, but my daughter bought me this years ago and it's a marble one. And up until I made, created this dough, I've never used it. So it came in handy. Let me set this here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna start rolling this out. And you do wanna work a little quickly when you're working with this because the cheese will start cooling down and then it isn't as pliable. But you wanna get this as big and long, and I, I tried to get it in a rectangle shape just for convenience, but it really doesn't matter. You just want it flat and thin and maybe about between an eighth and a quarter inch thick. And you can see how easy, again, this dough, for those of you who had not seen the Miracle Dough yet, 
good. I can move this over a little bit. How easy it is to work with. I can just pick this up. Um, I've made little uh, cups with this. You can cut, use a, a cookie cutter and cut circles out and take your cupcake pan, invert it, your muffin pan, and you can bake them and make little bowls. I've made bowls stuffed with savory stuff. I've made um, desserts and put desserts in there. So again, it's versatile. It's still feeling a little thick right over here on this side. So I'm gonna, I'm just gonna turn it. I'm gonna give it some push, Ugh. push, push, push. Now, if I, like I said, I'm only gonna bake this maybe five minutes, whoop. About five minutes is all, because I want it to be soft enough to roll. If I let it go long, it gets firmer, and that's why it makes a great pizza crust. Like with this dough right here, I use my tortilla press to make tortillas and wraps, so good. I use that tortilla press when I want to make little fried pies filled with blueberry and cream cheese. Oh, so, so, so tasty. I'm going to get this off my thing here for a second. And I'm just going to pull some parchment. And it will stick because it does have a cheese base. So use parchment paper. I haven't used a non-stick pan, so I can't really tell you. But I'm saying if you're using something like a non-stick baking pan, make sure that you spray it well and if I wanted to I could cut this into just the piece size I want but I'm just gonna do it like this how easy right right there we go and I don't want you touching that side I want you like that all right into the 425 for about five minutes and I need to look at time so that I don't lose track of it so it's 417 so at about, no, it just turned 418. So at about 423, I'll pull that out. Now we can just work with fillings. This is the fun part. It's easy peasy. I'm gonna pull all this stuff back over here. So I thought I had bacon. Who runs out? I did. I went to the store, got some stuff to make sure I could put something. I thought, how do I wanna fill it today? So last night when I made pen wheels, I was out of mozzarella cheese, so I subbed uh, shredded cheddar it made cheddar, cheddar pinwheels. Oh, they were tasty. And that's something you can do. You can sub whatever cheeses. I've done four cheese blends when I'm making that dough up. You make different crackers and things. But I went ahead and got some mozzarella. I have some leftover rotisserie chicken that I bought yesterday. And I am gonna do some spinach. I'm gonna do some cream cheese. And I was gonna put some bacon. But, I'm going to use a little bit of avocado. We're going to do chicken, avocado, cilantro, uh, pinwheels. Oh, right? Delicious. What you want to do is just take a package of cream cheese. I've let mine set out on the counter so that it's pliable and creamy and room temperature. Put it in a bowl. And <clears throat> last night I used a jar of roasted red pepper, bell pepper, no sugar added. Diced it up really fine, used a hand mixer and just mixed it all up. Um, today, I'm going to just put a little bit of cilantro in this, cre in this cream cheese mixture to give it a little flavor. I'm not going to go heavy. Well, yeah, I will. You could add a little green chili, which, hey, maybe I should do that. A little green chili and a little, sort of like a, almost an Albuquerque turkey, if you will. So I do think I have some chili sauce somewhere in here far as I know, but of course, of course, of course, of course, can't find it. Darn it, darn it. Let me see if somebody opened it already because it was in the fridge. Oh, somebody opened it over the weekend. Oh, there you go. So I'm going to add a little bit of cilantro to this. I'm going to add a little green chili to this. I'm also going to grab some of that, of that rotisserie chicken. You know, it's funny because we buy rotisserie chickens. We eat the legs, the wings, and the thighs off, and then we're just like, whoever wants the breast can have it. And because now we're all keto, we fight over the breast. Remember back in the day? Everybody, I remember dad could have a big piece of chicken breast, you know? Kids got legs and stuff. And then when I got older, I was all about that chicken breast. Now I don't even care for it, you know, unless I'm putting mayo or something on it to add fat because it tastes dry to me. 
So there's the dead of that, and I've got that last little bit of breast right there. Um, I'm going to open this. My hands are wet. There we go. Get that going. And it's going to be really, you know, you can do this Italian style, guys. You can, anything you can think of. I've got some peppers over here. I don't know if they thawed or not. But I'm just going to give my chicken a rough chop. Just, uh, it'll make it easier on the roll up, you know, when we're making the pinwheel. And I'll just cube it a little bit. I think I'll take this wishbone out of there. Don't want to choke. That would not be fun. There we go. So that's kind of big. Now we've got bite-sized manageable pieces. We have got some cilantro, which we can just really quickly chop and get it minced down. And I'm going to put that in the cream cheese, y'all. Into the cream cheese. Oh my goodness. Get that little chop there, put that in there. And another spoon. There we go. And as little or as much chili as you like for heat wise. This is the Hatch New Mexico 505 green chili. It's not a salsa, it's just fire roasted medium green chilies that have been diced and jarred and off. Oh, it's good. And I added probably about a quarter of a cup. And I'm just going to stir my cream cheese. You can use a hand mixer if you want. I put it in my stand mixers. I used to make, for parties and stuff, I would get my stand mixer out to do this because I would make platters of pinwheels all the time for parties. But I think it'll be fine. It's just going to mix up really easy here with the cream cheese. And this is one of these things you can make it up. You can meal prep this. You could, once it's all done, I'll show you. You could just wrap it in, in um, saran wrap, plastic wrap. And uh, it's one of those things where you let the flavors come together, you know? So, uh, there we go. I do like my mixer a little better because it, it breaks that cheese down and really makes everything come together really creamy and smooth, but it's coming. And it occupies my time. It is 4.23. It is time to pull out our Miracle Dough. In four minutes, it's, you can see it's already got just the teeniest little bit of brown to it. And I'm going to grab this parchment paper. I'm going to slide it right off of this pan, get this pan out of my way. Oops, I tore it, I tore it, I tore it just a teeny bit. I think it'll be all right, guys. There we go. And let me get rid of this as well. All right, so you can let this cool down for just a second. In the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and do some sliced avocado. If you wanted, you could make this into guacamole, but I thought it sounded good to just like cover this in chili and, and cilantro cream cheese and then lay down some spinach or lettuce, whichever you prefer. I just happen to have spinach. So I'm going to use it. And then if you wanted, you could use prepackaged guacamole, make it easy for yourself. Not a big deal. And I think bacon would have just been the kicker. I looked down there and I was like, what? There's no bacon. Dang it. So you just want to scoop your avocado out and take off this little bit of peel there and ditto here. This is letting this cool down just a little because it's super hot and we're fixing to put cream cheese down on it. So, ah, there we go. Scoop some of that out. Oh, my trash is overflowing. Turn it upside down. And you can just give it a nice thin slice. And same thing here. Thin slice. And now we're ready. How fast is this? This is not one of these long drawn out tutorials, okay? This is like boom, fast, easy, yummy. So I'm gonna I'm gonna just pull this off the parchment paper and see where we're at. You see how soft and it how it just lifts up guys easily. That's there we go. So I'm gonna take this cream cheese and I'm gonna start with pretty much all of it. I mean 
You won't use all of it. You can save the, what's left over. And you just want to use a spatula and just spread it. I mean, I'm sure y'all have made pinwheels before using flour tortillas or wraps, you know. That was one of that was one of our go-to girly meals for real. Like, don't want to cook, but pinwheels were so easy to make and and one of those light things that you could eat. Now I will tell you, these little bad boys are filling because the protein, high protein, and fiber in this will fill you up quickly. So now you've got your smear here. We got a smear here. And if you want a little bit more, it's a little thin on this side, so I'm going to give it a little bit more. Yum, yum, yum. There we go. If you want, we could just kick it up. And I will sprinkle just the teeniest bit of the taco y mas. This is just a local store brand of taco seasoning. I like it because it's sugar free. Go lightly on it because it's salty. And now we're just going to put some spinach down. Now the spinach, like I said, you could easily use lettuce, you could use romaine, you could use arugula, whatever green floats your boat. But I like the green in, in my pinwheels. You can layer these up as thin or as thick as you like. And then we're going to take this and I, I just kind of do a very light thing of spinach. I don't want it like a salad. I just want it for some texture, some flavor. And then you just want to take your chicken, bacon. So this is where I needed my bacon. <laughs> bacon in between the chicken would have been bomb diggity calm. I'm telling y'all. All right. You can add more chicken if you like. I've got another rotisserie chicken in there, but I don't feel like dealing with that. I think this will be enough because it's going to roll up really nice. And then you can just drop your avocado through here. Again, you could take this and smear it. You could add your avocado to your cream cheese mixture if you wanted. Make it like an avocado cream cheese, however you want. But I want this texture too. I do. It's so pretty, even by itself. Now you can add some, I want some red somehow, some way. Let's get some red in there. Uh, I had in my freezer, which I took out to thaw, thank goodness it is thawed. I've got a little bit of diced red pepper and onion. So I'm just going to add a piece of that here. It's, I'll just sprinkle it. Isn't that pretty, y'all? Isn't that good? Nice, nice, nice. I particularly like the red. Just, just because it looks so pretty and so festive. There we go. There. She here. Now, all you do is start rolling and I just use the paper that it's already on to get it lifted up and over and then we go. We go, we go, we go, we go. And you can see how big this is, guys. I mean, it is big. This is not your typical tortilla, right? Because this is a whole batch of Miracle Dough just for these wraps. Now, what I'm going to do to show you all is I'll cut some. there. Let's move this off the table. I'm going to get a long thin knife now. Right here, a serrated knife. And don't worry about this here. Just tuck it under and push over. There you go. Now at this point, like I said, you get the plastic wrap out if you like. Wrap it tight. Stick it in the fridge. Let the flavors come together. Stay there. And oh, let me get a cute plate. will be cute. Don't you think it will be cute? For the sake of the video and the tutorial, I'm just going to cut. Now you always have those end pieces that are kind of loose. That's my family. They wait around and they're like, we'll eat those end pieces. And I cut them about a half an inch. And I'm telling you right now, guys, this would be better if I had let it kind of cool a little bit more and squish it down tight. I want to get it tighter. Squeeze it, compact it. There we go. I want you to see that. Isn't that lovely? Aren't those pretty? Don't you want a bite? <laughs> Let's put it like that. 
and just do it again and just hold it together and again if you will just let these sit if you will just let them sit a little bit before you get into all this cutting you will get a tighter roll if you wrap it in plastic wrap I told my husband about it I'm working on recipes because for now I'm sticking key, uh, carnivore but I'm still looking for recipes oh I want to put a prettier one on there this center piece right here now is really nice slicing really easy and there goes my knife oh perfect let me put the, pick this up and get rid of it let me let me let me all right guys let me show you what this looks like plating i'm going to bring it around to y'all what do you think is that lovely do you love it if you love it can i see some hearts some likes do you see how fast that was oh yes Hey, Betty. Hey, Cindy and Wendy. Yes, 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 guys. Okay, so there you go. That's how you do pinwheels. Any flavor, any style you like. These will be for Elizabeth tonight. I'm going to actually get a chance to take some pictures of this, I think. So, for posterity's sake, I will take my bite shot. Mm-mm-mm. Mm -mm. Mmm. Mmm. Bam, baby. Mmm. <laughs> you guys are going to love this. You are absolutely going to enjoy yourself. I mean, I love this appetizer. To me, I would have sat down and said, oh, you couldn't even eat this much. You know, you cannot. You probably could only eat, if you push it, three of these. They're so filling. They're high fat. They've got good protein. They've got some nice veg. So I, uh, I love it. Now, some people say, well, I don't know if that's clean eating or not. I, I find for me that I can eat the miracle dough and the lupin flour. It doesn't affect me the way almond flour does. When I eat almond flour, and I have loved it for a year, I started noticing the, like, it started giving me inflammation. I would have water retention, swelling, a little achy joints. So that's kind of when I really started playing with the liquid flour, looking for an alternative to coconut flour and looking for an alternative to almond flour. And that's how I came up. Now, you guys got to get some Miracle Dough. Um, I have a link. I'll share it. I'll post it. And really, this recipe is so simple. I, I, I just... Uh, <laughs> I can basically just tell you one ingredient, one recipe of Miracle Dough. Then we have an eight ounce brick of cream cheese. Flavor it, season it with your own thing. This is just so versatile and so easy. It's pretty self-explanatory. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm gonna look at some.